Uh, very good evening uh, to all our viewers. Welcome to today's edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabella, your host. Tonight on the show, we are joined by Seti Karisep, or Garisep, who is uh, chairperson of the Okahanja Consent Group. Uh, he's been doing a lot of trips between Windhoek and Okahanja to consult the leadership of government here in Windhoek, and he will explain why and what are the issues that they have. Seti, welcome to the show. Yes, thanks a lot. Yeah. As a for. Yeah, thank you. So, first and foremost, Okahanja Consent Group, what is that? Yeah, uh, we are the consent members. We are the consent groups of the current situation that we are living in. In Okahanja? In Okahanja. Okay. Is it residents? Who, who, who makes up the, the, is it politicians? Is it activists? Who make up the group? Yeah, it's the residents that make up the group because we are concerned of this life that we are living, mm -hmm. year in and year out. Yeah, yeah. What are the issues? Uh, we are facing a lot of challenges in, uh, uh, in the informal settlements. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the issues are there. We don't have ownerships. We don't have uh, uh, something to call home. Mm -hmm. Those are the challenges and is how the group come up as a content group. Mm -hmm. well, so when you say you don't have <coughs> you don't have something to call home, um, I mean, how, how do people live? Give me a, a picture of how the people, especially in the informal settlement, live in Okahanja. Do you live on land that does not belong to you? Are you occupying the land illegally? Or where, how do people live? Where do they live? Uh, uh, if I can, if I can talk about Oshedo Number One. Yeah. Oshedo Number One was the location that I was still a small boy, mm. and now I'm a grown-up man. And that location, up to now, is not even having ownership. Nobody is having ownership. Any of those informal settlements that we are calling, we are illegal. People are going to campaign in those informal settlements. Mm. How can they come and uh, campaign? Campaign time, we are legal. Campaign time. We are legal. After the campaigning, we are illegal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Osheto, Osheto number uh, number one and Osheto number two, those locations are staying almost 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. But those people, and also some stand included, those people are staying there for, for those years, but they don't have ownerships. Mm -hmm. And then the councillors, we vote, they come, they go, they, we vote, they come and they go. And those are the serious, serious issues, and we want serious politicians mm -hmm. that are serious of our life. Because I think mm, that the politician parties, they are coming out and make meetings, but once they go back, they're just going to represent their parties, mm -hmm. not us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when you say they don't have ownership, you're saying that um, <coughs> people have structures there, but they, the, the structures are not, the land is, does not belong to them. They are not registered. If you go to the municipality, the, these names will not, their names will not be in the system as owners of that land. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's, 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 what, I'm, it's, it's what I'm saying. Uh, Master Twevo, if, if, if you can see, we grab the land. But what is the strategy plan for them now? Mm. What forced us to grab the land? Mm. What forced us to grab the land? I cannot stay in my parents' house and grow up there and then there is no plan for me. So we go and grab the land and we are also losing job and we are renting and then you don't have something to call home. And we fight for this country to get land. And mm. we, we fight for the country, we again suffer because of the land again. Mm. Yeah. It's very interesting, uh, Mr. Garisab, when you say that um, you seem to suggest that you you are a resident of Okahanja, that you, you, you grew up there. Yes. Now you are a, an older man and seemingly you are still in your own town, in your own native land, if you like do not have land. Is that a situation just unique to you or is there a lot of other people who are who have the same background as yourself having grown up in Okahanja but somehow up to now they don't have land? Yeah, there is, there is uh, Okahanja is just a disease. A lot of people that were growing with me together in town, they don't even have home to call today. Mm. And it's, it's very painful for us. If you if, if can quickly check this, that one guy can put a flat for, f to build a lot of flats there, 
And for us, for me, just to give one plot is a problem. It's mm -hmm. a fight. But how many illegal stuff was happening in this country? But to give me a piece of land is a problem. Mm. Or to give us a piece of land is a problem. Mm. Yeah. The, what are the conditions in those areas? Of course, I mean, if you say that the land was occupied illegally, I'm suspecting then that uh, even the services are, are not reaching you guys. What, what, when you s spoke about, you said Oshetu. Yeah, Oshetu. <coughs> Oshetu, Samstan, uh, and all these areas. What kind of services, municipal services, do you receive? Do you have water, electricity, and all these things? Roads? Yeah, uh, if, you can, yeah if you can see, is that uh, the challenge that we are facing there is there is no toilet facilities. Mm. And we are using the river back because of the boundary wall that was made there. Mm. Is where we used to go and uh, help ourselves, but now we must use the river back. And for the elders and for the women, it's very painful because you cannot use during the day. Mm. You must stay in the in the house and only in the night that you can come out to the river back. And it's all it's very challenging for a woman because a snake can bite, a kid can be bite by the snake, or it can be raped mm. because it's very very dark. Mm. Yeah, it's it's very very dark and it's. It's a challenge. It's a, it's, a, it's a big challenge in Okahanja. Mm. Yeah. What has been the response of um, your leaders, your local authority leaders in Okahanja, the municipality, to, to, your, to your concerns? Uh, the response of them is they, use, they were just sending me back acknowledgement letters, acknowledgement letters, and then uh, we make a demonstration, a demo, and then they never answer us on the demo. It was 11 May, and they do not answer us, and then we come and make a demo here at uh, in Ventuk by the minister uh, Erastos Utoni, Epen and Rulo. And uh, um, he take our things and he sent back. But the answer that the municipality give us on the 11, on the 11 petition, no, 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 it's not what we ask. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, they are big not to politics. Mm -hmm. It's not what we ask on the petition. We ask ownership on the, and the service is that service, that if we get the service, we will pay for the service. How, why must I pay for something that I must pay? Mm. We'll pay for the services, so they must just bring the services because they are the ones that, that say, no, if you vote for us, we'll give you sugar mm. so that you can drink coffee. But now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 then, and these things are just repeating. Eh? Okay, after this election is coming, it's again repeating. So before the elections, yeah. we want ownership in Okahanja. Mm. Before the elections, we want ownership in Okahanja. Mm. So ap apart from um, toilets, the ablution facilities, as, as some call it, um, do, do you have electricity in your area? No, not at, not, all, not at all. That's also the bigger challenge. Our kids are studying on the candles. Houses can bend down because of the candle. Mm. And uh, in, the, in the morning, kids are also going very, very early to the schools, and it's, so it's, it's, it's just unsafe for mm. the elders and for even myself, it's very, very unsafe mm. for myself also. Yeah. You're going to even see yourself because it's dark. <laughs> yeah. W where do you get your water from? Uh, the water is that uh, I did write a letter to Melissa Palatid. It was also a tough. It was very, very tough. It was not easy to get that water. Mm. It was very, very tough. And then we dig our pipeline self. The community, we dig it by ourselves. And the municipality just support us with the pipe. And, and, and then they just put for us the tap there. And then we also buy those water cuts for $350. Now they are making from those water taps a bit of money or money. Mm -hmm. So what is so difficult to give us uh, um, the, 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 the water? Mm -hmm. And at the uh, electric facility is that I went to Senorit. When I went to municipal aid, they told me Senorit is having the responsibility. Mm -hmm. When I went there, I was sitting with the operation manager with Master Berry. And he told me, no, the ground is a municipality. For, for them, they can come and put it any time. They don't have a problem. They're just waiting for the municipality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think a I think, uh, municipality is the one who's blocking. All our leaders are the ones who are blocking to get our service. I don't know why they are blocking, but they are the ones. They, the kids are having the services. And what about us? All Anamibians. Yeah. Uh, as, as voters, what, what do you feel um, when you queue up to vote for your leaders, for your local authority leaders, on the promise of uh, a better life, better services, and then 
they join council and then um, you know nothing of nothing comes out of their promises as a voter how how does that make you feel Mr. Trevor, to get up early in the morning and to come and stand in that queue. For me, I don't need to be a committee or I don't need to be an activist, but to open your voice, you go and vote. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it's very, very painful to go and stand in the queue. And for every year since my elder brother, the thing is just the same up to today. It's very, very painful and there's no changes. Everybody came with a strategy, come politic there or come running around with the cars in illegal areas. And then if they if they get their positions, they totally forget about us. Mm. Yeah, they totally forget about us, and we are tired for this story. That's why we are saying before the election, we want to see some progress. There is a word that we call tools, and tools is something must happen. Mm. Yeah, we want to see something is happening yeah. in Okahanja, because we can see other towns, other towns are, are development. But if they come to Okahanja, even if, if you can check of, of, of elders' waters in Okahanja, it's never been righted off. But other towns, we're hearing people are writing off elders' water. Mm. But Harambe also. Mm. There's no Harambe in Okahanja. Okahanja is just, it's just backwards. It's not a garden town anymore. Yeah. yeah, and we need, we need, we need, we need, we need also to, 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 to so that the, the, the other, also the other parties and the people must involve in the story of Okahanja so that we must get rest. Because why must I just, if I pass away, if I die that time, I get my plot. It's, and that is my plot, a graveyard. Why? Only that time. <laughs> it's true. Must I go and live with my kids there, on the graveyard? I hear you. Just before you go on a, on a quick break, uh, Seti, the, the, you spoke about how the children are affected by these things, uh, having to use candles to study. Um, th that must be very difficult for the children, even for their school performances, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a good question, uh, Master Toivo. I, I, I think teachers are trying their best. Yeah, they are doing their best. But uh, the government must also look into that because it is very, very affecting if, if our kids mm. to study on the candle is very, very difficult. Because remember, if they come back from school, they must go and look for a fire hood. Yeah. From fire, they must come back and they must go and fix water at the water tap. There are a lot of people at one water point yeah. and they must wait. And from there, once they come back, they are tired, they must rest. And then from six, they must start to study. Mm. Automatically, the candles must be on. Yeah. 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 And it's and very, very difficult. And dangerous also. It, can, also lead, it can lead to fires. It can lead to fires. The shake, shake fires. Yeah, it can lead to fires. Mm. Yeah, it can, it, can, it can lead to fires. So uh, I think uh, um, the politic must change to reality. Yeah, wonderful. Because we grow up now, eh? politics must change to reality. It's not like all time that we are plotting. We grow up in this mess, and we don't want our kids must be grown up in this mess. Yeah, 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 indeed. We go for a quick break and return. Your innocence is engaging. You can try to hide what's meant for me. If I were you, I wouldn't try. We continue for the last part of the show, our conversation with uh, Seti Karizeb from the Okahanja Concern Group. Um, Seti, it then it looks to me as if after not being able to get your breakthrough at Okahanja, your, your local leadership there, you then started engaging national leaders in Vinduk. Uh, you spoke earlier about uh, Urban and Rural Development Minister Erastus Utoni. Uh, how 
has he been treating your situation? Uh, uh, for me, uh, um, I feel very unfair. Yeah, if you because can speak up a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel very unf un uh, unfair because uh, um, when you demonstrate in Venduk, when you come and apply for at the police or demonstration, the police told us to pay uh, $415. But before the demonstration, I was writing the letters to the minister also. Mm. And I think minister was aware about this, uh, these things that is happening in Okahanja. So I think it was a, a bit unfair, but not bit unfair, it was unfair, mm. the way that the minister treat us. Yeah, because we bring the problem to him, and he sent bringing the problem to the people, mm -hmm. to those ones. And those, why we come to him is that he must solve this problem. He must solve on the on the higher level. But he sent us back again, mm -hmm. and it's the answer that we get back. But for us to travel from Okahanja, it costs us a lot of money, plus money to pay um, the, the police for marching four hundred and fifty dollars, and it is it is very painful, and uh, we are not happy with the answer that we get from the uh, local authority. Hmm. Yeah. W what did you What did you ask him to do? Or uh, what are you asking him to do? We We tell him that we want ownership, and we already endorse the people of we We endorse the people and the people of Okahanya, the council of Okahanya, they know about this issue. Hmm. Yeah, because this issue has been in, in the newspapers, on NPC, One Africa. So the whole world know about this issue of Okahanya, and he sent us back again to the same fire. Mm. Yeah, and up to now nothing is happening. So we decided to take to take the other step again. Mm. Yeah. Um, help me understand, Seti. Um, what would it sounds like a very Sorry for my choice of word, but it sounds like a stupid question, but I'll still pose it to you. Yeah. If land ownership was given to you, what would be the advantages? What, what will come out of that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if we could give, uh, get uh, land ownership mm. on our names, we can start to build our houses. Because uh, remember, if you tend to 40 years, you can get a cross with the bank. But is it you will get it a high or a low, but it will be very difficult to pay it off. But if you get now in the thirties, you can pay it off very quick. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are in Vinduk uh, now because you went to you went to the Prime Minister's office? Yeah, I went to the Prime Minister's office to drop off the letter mm. so that she must intervene in this uh, um what is happening in Okahanja, mm. in for the information that Masimas intervene before we stay again the set further steps. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what was the reaction? You, who did you meet there? Yeah, when I went in, I met the uh, officer, the police officer, and then uh, he told me that the uh, people are not in the office. It was lunchtime, and I was waiting for them, and then later on, he called one lady, and the one lady take up the, uh, the paperwork, and she bring it mm. with the stamp for me. Mm. Yeah, but the reaction of them and the welcome area was very good yeah. from the office, yeah. Yeah. How difficult is it um, for ordinary citizens like you and me, um, you know, making these trips from Okahanja almost every week, trying to knock on the doors of your national leaders, the leaders who are supposed to be serving you, but you are being sent from pillar to post. Uh, people basically saying, okay, we acknowledge your letter, and nothing concrete comes out of it. How does that make you feel? Do you think that uh, ordinary citizens in this country are not being taken serious? Yeah, they are not taking us very, very serious because uh, there are times that I'm calling people, especially at Ministry of Urban Ruler, I'm calling there, and they are telling me that patient is not in the office. Mm -hmm. But if I come, the patient is in the office. So I'm wasting my credit to call. Mm -hmm. And they are there for us, but they are not saving us. To get the letter, I must wait five to six days. And they're just killing time. So it's, it is very, very painful. That's why I say in the beginning, we need serious politicians. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a question that I ask a lot of people that come to the show, uh, and I'm 
putting it to you today. Um, why do you keep pushing when you, when these officials are slamming the doors in your face, essentially, but somehow you always come here to to seek help? Does that speak to how serious the con the conditions are for your people to say that yes? It's bad conditions, and, and therefore, even if we attend back, we just have to keep going there? Or where does that, that courage come from? What is driving you to keep coming here when you are not getting really any solutions? Uh, as, I can, uh, as I can, yeah, it's a good question that I do. Uh, if, I, if I see the elders yeah. that are in the 80s and 81, 82, I think they also fight for these countries independent. Somehow, somehow, but they are still struggling like that, and they didn't even eat from the cake but they are like that. So those one mm. are the ones who are pushing me. Mm. Yeah. Because I want at least they must eat from the cake before they pass on. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier on, uh, Mr. Garisab, you said that uh, Okahanja is no longer the garden town that it used to be. If you can explain that to me, paint a picture for me of the Okahanja that you grew up in as a boy mm. to the Okahanja that you live in today. Um, yeah, that one is a that one is a very good one. Eh? Okanja was we know is is a garden town. You should drive from here to to the north to the coast to wherever you must pass Okanja. It's a big town, and everybody knows what 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 I'm talking about. It was a garden town. It was a clean town. Mm -hmm. But if you can look today, it's just a rubbish town. Lot of rubbishes mm -hmm. and lot of corruption is happening in Okanja. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is to blame for that? Who, who, who must we blame for the degeneration of this once glorious town to where it is now? Who, who is to blame? We have to blame. It can't be the wind that is blowing. No, no, we, <laughs> Master Trevor, yeah. that one is a very, very good question. We have to blame our leaders. Yeah. We have to blame the people that we choose because they are, they are churches. Yeah, they are churches. These guys who are running around and make peep peep and say what what what. They are the ones who are churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think uh, that's why I say in the beginning and I'll repeat again. We need serious politicians because people are just there for self enrichment and for their family. Yeah. How will you? Th I, I'm not believing in the, if those guys, even the the top leaders also, if they bring a family members in those areas, they could have surfaced already, mm -hmm. but they know they are not, they, there is nothing of the family there. They don't care about us. They are careless. Yeah. Yeah. And the, one of the things that I observed in Okahanja, I could be wrong, but I think I've read a lot in the papers, you can tell me about it more because you are, uh, you are the man on the ground there, is that uh, politicians, your local authority politicians, a lot of them go there and suddenly you hear that they own big plots of land themselves. I, is that uh, what you also observe? Yeah, that is... 100% to the officials and the municipality workers. Mm. Those ones are the ones that can get lands. Those ones they can, those are the ones who can get lands. I'm sitting here, how is it? I'm sitting here with, where did I put that? I'm sitting here with a map. Yeah. Where is that map? Yeah. I'm sitting with the map here. If one person can own this, own this land, only one person. Yeah. A worker of municipal audit. So he's an employer of the municipality? Yeah. He's owing this. Mm -hmm. Owing or owning? Yeah, owning this. It's his. Yeah. It's, also, it's on his name. Yeah. Yeah. But to give me a one plot to call it home is a problem. Yeah. It's How much I feel? I'm not a Chinese. Yeah. I'm a Namibian. Yeah. And if you can look also there, there is behind Fergeno, there is a cap a blue whatever there they were planning to open a biggest pharmacy but we see now there is a big chinese building there and that building is behind Ferhenuch, behind the illegals but he's having electricity he's having water how come mm. i hear you okay yes no it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one but um i suppose the last question then is um what is it that must happen now? Uh, you've spoken to your local authority there. 
there's no joy coming out of it. You came to the line ministry, no joy coming out of it. Prime Minister, now is the last stop, your latest stop. What, what do you hope will happen then? How do you, what, what must the Prime Minister do to help your community? Uh, uh, I have, I have a lot of thick, uh, trust in the Prime Minister and I think she will do something because they are also women and children and she is a woman and I mean trust that's why I go to her mm. and uh, I think something good will come out there because she never knew about this knew about this yeah. so I take it up to her and I see everybody in this letter, letter of mine and I hope good results yeah. from the Prime Minister's office. Wonderful. Mr. Garisap it was uh, a pleasure having you on the show we hope and pray that uh, your prayers will be he will, will be heard by the highest office offices in the country. Thank you for coming to the show. Thanks, Mr. Trevor. Yeah, that is uh, Sidi Garisab uh, of the Okahanja Concern Group, filling us in on the situation on the ground there in the Garden Town. Thank you for watching. <laughs>